welcome to this uh, Warhammer 40,000 uh, painting tutorial and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I paint my towel and uh, quite a unique colour scheme. You may have seen the towel in previous games and uh, it's sort of the dark grey, light grey and then also uh, the bronze effect on them. I've since uh, updated the army, I've re revamped them and added some extra colours into them so I'm going to show you from scratch how to paint that colour scheme. Uh, it's quite straightforward and uh, quite impressive looking. So that's the uh, XV88. They're one of my favourite uh, releases from Games Workshop in recent years. Really nice uh, figure there. So I'm showing you how to paint that one. It's quite a big one. Should look something like this when it's done. Sort of gone for uh, a tower army that's been on campaign. So I've created a metallic effect on uh, the armour, some scrapes and some scratches and then also sort of this weathered effect on the panelling as well just to show that this Tau army has been out on campaign for quite a while so I'm going to take you through the stages, I'm going to get from uh, to build it up from here to here, there's a number of stages and layers to do uh, but if you follow the video uh, you'll be able to get the same results uh, with no problem at all, I'm going to show you exactly how it's done each step of the way right so just on preparation for this model Obviously the model's been constructed, put in its base, and then I've uh, based it. Just uh, just check out other videos that I've done on basing. There is a short painting tip video which is called How to Base Your Figures, and I'll show you exactly how to do the basing. And then uh, the, once the whole thing's been constructed and the basing's been put on and it's dry, then I give the whole thing uh, a spray of the Montana Gold and the colour is steel grey or it's been changed, the name is called Stealth now and uh, you can use that spray, now I get those sprays, people have been asking where do you buy these sprays from uh, you can get them, these are aerosols for like graffiti artists so any websites uh, that do that you'll probably find Montana Gold Sprays, one of the most popular spray ranges for graffiti artists, you can look it up on there, I get mine from eBay often you'll find uh, tins of it on eBay as well uh, but that particular colour, it's a nice dark grey and you'll see how handy that comes in as we progress with this uh, painting tutorial uh, but it's steel grey, it gives you a nice dark grey, not black black's very hard to build up from uh, but this dark grey uh, gives you a head start in lots of different areas as you'll see so that's the preparation uh, for the figure and then uh, really once that's done you're ready to make a start Right, I'm just going to run over the paints that you'll need for this project. Uh, there's not too many paints. Um, just going to run over the names that I've got, and you can check your paints uh, just by looking up the Sistel Paints conversion chart, and that will give you the old and the new names, and you can make sure you've got the right shades uh, to match the paints that I have here. Uh, so, uh, Abaddon Black, which is the old uh, Chaos Black, and then Ceramite White, which is the old Skull White, just your two base colours are black and white there and then uh, the old codex grey and then a lighter shade of grey which is the new paint it's called administratum grey that's a lighter shade than the codex grey and then ushabati bone which is the old bleached bone and then I've got the old uh, blazing orange there and on the end the old ultramarines blue and then coming over to washes just two washes seraphim serpia and Agrax Earth Shade, and then Free Metallics, the Hashak Copper, which is the old Dwarf Bronze, and then Iron Breaker, which is the old Chain Mao, and then finally uh, Mithril Silver, that's the old colour name. But that's all the paints you need for this project. Right, so now we move on to the basing now. Uh, so we've got two colours here, you've got your Codex Grey which is the mid grey colour and you've got your uh, white as well and then we've got quite a large brush here, I've got a wash brush and you just take some of the Codex Grey and you, you want to cover the brush but you don't want to fill in the detail so I just fill the brush up and then wipe off the excess and then you're just looking to do the highlight on the stones there. With the Codex Grey not too much paint on the brush but enough to work it in and you'll find that it there's not enough paint to fill in the gaps but enough to cover the stones so 
So I'm going to do a bit more here. I'm just working in on the base. It's quite a quick technique for basing, but pretty effective. So that's the front part done. Just come around the side now. If you make a mistake and hit the edge, uh, just run your finger along, you can wet it, and then just wipe off the spare paint. Because you want to leave this uh, rim, that nice dark grey colour will be good enough and I'm not going to touch it. So you, already you can see with that base colour of that grey, you haven't got the rim to worry about, that's already done. I'm just working the colour in. Oh, it's done really with this grey. You want to get good coverage. You see with that spray paint, the dark grey is already done for you. And now you're just going straight on to highlight, so it's nice and quick. And that's, that's that done. Then uh, with the grey still on the brush, take some white. I want to make a very, very, very light grey, but not pure white. You see that there, the grey is sort of mixed in with the white. Because uh, I don't want to start white on the base, and then this one is not as strong. You're not going for a strong a shade here. You're just sort of putting about half as much effort in as you did with the grey, and that just highlights the tops of the stones. You soon get used to how much you need to do. You see the way that's brought the highlighting out there, and all those details of those stones. It's coming out very nice. Just a bit more white. And then just flicking the brush neatly around the edge there. That looks good. Coming around right up to the edge of the rim, nice and neat. And then just on all of the detail there. And then just at the front of the feet. And anywhere where the white's not strong enough, I just add a bit more white just to bring out the strength of that highlighting. And that is the highlighting in two tones done. Right, then once that's dry, uh, the next stage you want to do is to get this uh, wash on the base. You're just trying to make the base look a bit more uh, natural, so you're just sort of staining it with the Seraphim Serpia here. Just running the brush, I try and run the brush around the feet, it sort of sets the miniature onto the base nicely. Uh, so I just dab the paint in on to, around the feet there and then just sort of in between the stones just in patches just to give it more of a natural look and you can flood it in quite strong just in between the feet there and it just sets the base off nicely And if you're painting in batches, you can get through your basin pretty quick and at the same time have a pretty nice effect. Now you can, when this miniature's finished, you can cover that with whatever type of flock you want or you can leave it entirely. I add a bit of green flock, it's nice uh, looking on the figure. And you can add on top as much or as little of that uh, as you want. So that's the basing done really. I won't need to do anything else until adding the flock later on. Uh, so I'm just going to go on to the main colours now for the rest of the miniature. Right, really the next stage is you've got to decide how you want to paint uh, your primary colours here. Uh, so we're not following any pattern from the book, it's sort of my own colour scheme. Uh, but what I've found uh, is a good idea, if I bring in one that's been painted here. We've got these, the three main colours that complement each other. You've got the light grey, the white and the orange. And I think those three colours together look really nice. But what you want to do, i found, is you want to put these colours in strength on the areas that you want to emphasise. So the key areas would be the head, uh, the shoulders, shoulder pads, and then I've decided to put some emphasis on the, the end of the gun, uh, just to highlight those key areas. You'll see on when I've painted my towel, and this applies to all of the units, including the infantry, is that there's not much of the colour around the feet and on the legs, and then as you go up the miniature, and come in closer towards the head, then the colours intensify around the area. And you're drawing attention to the top part of the miniature in the head, which is what people naturally look at. And then also you want to emphasise the fact that he's carrying a huge gun. Um, 
so I've used more grey and then right at the end here I found that's a nice spot to add in uh, some white and orange as well. Uh, that'll mean that you're not painting the whole miniature in the grey and spending loads and loads of time, you're just picking out areas and then just the key areas that you're doing mainly in those colours. Also the other thing for the tower is often you've got a squad and then you're not going to have a squad or a team leader and you want to mark him out different from the others. So you'll see uh, this one's my team leader and what I've done for him is I've made the head white instead of grey and I've just swapped the colours around. I put orange on the main part of the pad here. I've got a white shoulder with an, uh, an orange centre and then orange uh, top part of the chest and then white at the lower half. Just uh, the more colours, more white as I would signify that as being sort of a command figure. So I'll be able to pick him out on the battlefield and he stands out from the others. So I'm going to paint uh, the leader like this and then I've already got one squad member here and then the one we're going to paint today is going to be in the same colour scheme as this one. So you'll have the two uh, regular XV-88s and then the squad commander painted in a slight variation to make him stand out from the others. Really, I'll be copying the colour scheme from this one over onto this one. These two will be the same rank in the unit so these two will match up. Uh, so I'm going to copy that there. Now as far as the colour is concerned, I've chosen orange and grey. Uh, you can apply this technique to any colours that you want. Uh, so you could choose perhaps you could keep the grey and swap this to yellow or a nice blue would look good or whatever colour you want. Uh, and you're not painting the entire miniature in that colour. You're just picking out some detail and it gives you a colour scheme for the whole unit without too much effort being put in. You see the same also uh, with this uh, crisis battle suit here. This is a leader, so he's got the white helmet. And you'll see he's got uh, more of these primary colours in the centre and on the shoulders. And then as you go further down the arms and the legs around the back, the more insignificant parts of the miniature, then I don't paint those. I just use the chipping technique. And that saves loads of time. I haven't had to spend loads of time painting here. I haven't had to spend loads of time painting the legs. I can just pick out the central details or the central colours and uh, to create that effect. So we're going to make a start with the white. Uh, so you've you just take in a standard brush and you're looking to be neat. You don't want to get uh, these colours onto the dark grey areas of the miniature. Uh, but mistakes can be repaired. It's not too uh, important at this time. So I'm going to neatly do the white here. I've got this chest uh, piece to do. Just uh, fill the paint in and I'm only going to do one coat and if it looks ghosty it doesn't matter at this stage because you're going to go over it again later so you just cover the miniature over just on this panel here and the good thing about tower is that all of the panel panels are marked out for you so you can run the brush right up to the edge of the panel and it's nice and neat so I'm just going to neatly run along the edge there fill that in. And you can see it's ghosty doesn't matter at this stage. I'm only going to do one coat sort of been painting a lot of towel recently and got this down to quite a quick method so you're just going over the whole miniature uh, the whole of the panel there and then just being as neat as you can when it comes to any areas that are dark grey so that's your white done. I'm just going to tuck behind there, make sure the edges are done. Right, so that's the white done. Uh, I'll just show you the areas that I've done. I've done here, just this panel on the shoulder, I've done the chest that I showed you earlier, the, the uh, crest on the left here, and then uh, this panel just on the shoulder pad, the tower crest, and then also the other tower crest that's just inside uh, on the chest there. You can sort of see it's just on the chest plate and then the tip of the missile and then the end of the gun. As I said earlier it's quite a ghosty covering but it doesn't matter at this stage you're just picking out making your first start on the detail. Next colour that I do, I do these primary colours first white, grey and orange uh, just so that when I look at the figure I, I'm happy with it because you might find you might, might want to fill in another panel somewhere else add some extra detail and then once you're happy with the way the miniature is then you apply the rest of the colours and techniques from there. You've got to balance the figure out until you're happy with it. 
Uh, I think it's quite nice as it is, but you might want to uh, change the combinations around. So we're just going for grey now. It's administratum grey. It's the lighter shade of grey. And uh, we're just going to fill in uh, some panels that we want done. So there's one panel here just on the arm. And the shoulder pad here. Now just being neat, I want to keep that uh, gap that runs along there for me. There. Like that. And then just... It's a good thing about towel, lots of panels, easy to paint. Again, this grey will be ghosty in colour, uh, but it doesn't matter at this stage. So you're just going to fill in, running up to the edge. Because that sculpting is done for you, you can use a bigger brush and move quicker and save yourself a fair amount of time. Just being neat there. The edge, a bit of ground there. Looks good. All right, just finished with the uh, the grey there. Just going around the various panels. So uh, just to run over those, so you can see where I've been. Just here on the panels by the gun. Just on this uh, section here, on the arm. Just that one there, and then this sighting equipment. I've done the whole box. Uh, in the grey as well. And on the legs, uh, to put a bit of variety in, I've done it different to this guy. I've uh, done it the same on this one, then I'll put two bits of grey on there just to mix it up. Uh, then just the plate over the abdomen sort of area there, top part of that is grey. The main chest plate is grey. Uh, the head is done in grey. You can see there. Just leaving some parts. The spots the round parts I've left, they'll be bronze later on. See the panels just under the twin linked uh, fusion or plasma rifles, just under there. I've done those panels in the grey, and then the square just on the end I've done in grey, and the panel just on the arm, the main part of the shoulder pad. Uh, the second part in on the missile, done in grey as well. And just the tip on the kneecaps, there and there, and then these parts here on the back of the legs, just the lower uh, part I've done in grey as well. Not really going to touch this area, it's the, the back of the miniature, uh, not too significant, could spend absolutely ages trying to paint all this and do the detail, just going to leave it and then use a quicker technique later on. And then just this uh, sensor or antennae part here I've done in the grey as well. So without having to cover the entire miniature in the grey, I've just picked out the key areas and uh, still brought it to life. So that's the grade done. Took a while, uh, but we're making good progress for the miniature now. Right, the next stage we wanted to paint the orange, uh, but we've already got a problem. The pigment isn't too strong, and if you apply that colour directly onto this grey, you're going to have to do loads and loads of layers uh, to build it up, and it'll still look quite dark. So what i found you can do is take a stronger pigment colour that's light, and so I've got the uh, Ursh Abati bone here and that links up quite well with the orange. I want to do two coats of that. That will give you a nice solid base colour and then the orange will go on top in one coat and it will keep its brightness and you won't see through to the grey. So we're looking to paint the orange but the first colour we're going to do is the Ursh Abati bone. So for example this shoulder pad, I'm just going to fill that in with the bone and you can see that that's ghosty to start off with. So do quite a strong layer, and then nice and neat. The key is not to apply the next layer until the first coat is completely dry, otherwise you'll disturb the paint and make a mess. You just want a nice smooth colour. Don't worry about the ghosting at this stage. And then I'm still using the standard brush at the moment. These panels are quite large, and I can still use it neatly. I can still use it neatly to... Uh, go up to the edge of these panels, so looks good. What's that done? I'm just going to apply that Ushabati bone colour to any parts of the miniature that are going to have the orange on them. Right, so that's the uh, the base colour of the you know, Ushabati bone. One coat, that's dried. So now you're just going to do a second coat, and a second coat should do it. Quite quite thick, just a generous amount of paint, and then your brush strokes just to neaten off 
that panel looks fine. It is a weathered look, so you're not looking for absolute perfection uh, on this because you're going to add uh, colours on top, sort of uh, to stain and to mark the colour anyway. But you want it nice and strong, uh, and this second coat's working just fine here. It's covering the miniature well. Just going to run it over there. That looks good. That's your second coat on, and then again, you've got to leave plenty of time for it to dry. So I've done there in the orange, I've done the plate just underneath uh, the figure there. In the orange, I've done the end of the gun in the orange. I'm just going to point it out to you as I paint along, so I'll run along there. Looks good. On top here, one, two, and then just on the uh, panels here, bottom panel, straight forward, and then the top panel as well in the orange. All the way around. Then there's a spot here just at the, the little square at the back of the helmet. I do in the orange. Just it's a nice one to pick out that. that. Looks good. So that's the orange, well, that's the uh Shabati bone done. That's the foundation for your orange. So the next stage, once that dry is just to apply the orange to that figure. And as I said earlier, it doesn't have to be orange, it could be any colour you want. You do green, blue, yellow. Uh, whatever colour scheme you like. I chose orange because I think orange and grey and white are a nice combination colour, look good together. Also, I haven't got any orange in any of the uh, 40k armies that I've done. Orange is a colour that I haven't done before, uh, so I thought it'd be a nice colour uh, to introduce into this tower colour scheme. So, again, standard brush, and you're just going to cover the area that you've done in the bone, going right and neat up to the edge don't miss any parts, then just with nice neat brush strokes that orange is going on in one solid coat you can't see through to the grey and the cream colour, the bone colour underneath doesn't interfere with the orange uh, itself, it's just sort of a nice neutral colour and it's not being influenced, it's not influencing the orange in any way Right, so that's the uh, orange done on the figure. I've just picked out the orange detail around, and you can see that the overall colour scheme of the figure is starting to uh, come through now. And those colours will only be emphasised as we uh, start to pick them out later on. Uh, but there's your base colours done, and really just two colours left to go just the bronze, which is again, it's a nice complementary colour. I'll show you here, look, you see the colour scheme, basic colours, and then if you add the bronze, just adds another dimension. Also that blue as well. Uh, I think it's a really nice complementary colour. All these colours bouncing off each other uh, to make it quite a striking uh, colour scheme. But again, you can change this colour around to something else. You can have a green sort of plasma style or red, orange, whatever. Right, so we're going to go on to the hash up copper. Um, and really the rule for this is the bits that I paint are these rounded parts. Uh, any of the cogs and parts that look like they're meant to be metallic, I pick those out. So my hash out copper's uh, beginning to run out this one, so there's not much left. Uh, but you'll find that this colour, if you paint it on, and the paint's well mixed, it goes onto the grey uh, just in one coat. And again, that grey is saving you lots of time. So nice brush strokes on there, and one coat will do fine, because later on you're going to put a wash over the top and then you're going to re-highlight with a hash up copper and mithril silver mix, and that will bring out that metallic effect. So I'm just running around there, one coat, a little bit ghosty, not too much, but uh, not enough. To worry about one coat will be fine even on this big panel 
you just apply it straight onto the grey. Uh, then looking at the rest of the miniature, there's some these rib parts in here. I think we'll do. I don't want to fill that in. So that's the copper in there, and then a couple of these bars here. Want them in the copper, and then in between the gun, there's these little squares. And then in the copper as well, and then just running up here, one of those in the copper. This is sort of this alien metal. It's not straight steel. It's this kind of uh, bronzy colour, like it's the tower. It's their own metallic that they have. It makes it different from just your regular uh, silvers and gun metals. So I'm just filling that in because I want the shading to go in there later, make that deeper and then bring a final highlight on top of that. So I'm just filling that in. This bit, these round things here, make sure you go all the way around. Fill that in. And then I've got the paint in the groove there, it doesn't matter whether you do or you don't, it's no problem. And then coming up the arm here, just filling that one in. This whole thing here, I won't fill in the gaps there, I'll just run the brush uh, straight over the top of that. On the bottom, and then neaten it and fill it in just around there. Just come in and make sure I've got the whole thing. And they're quite quickly starting to build up uh, the colour. It's a nice colour, I think it um, complements the grey well as well. Just running it along here as well. And this particular image has quite a lot of this bronze. So you want to be neat, you don't want to get this one anywhere. This is a colour you want to be quite neat with. If you're not neat, then you just make work for yourself later on. So at this stage, with this colour, it just pays to be neat. So that's the gun on this side generally done. Looking good. And then I'm just going to go over the rest of the bronze on the miniature here. Right, so that's the copper done. Uh, so I've done the gun along here. And then just around on the other side of the gun, just again in between the gaps. Uh, there and then inside here, here around the disc along here and then along the top one, two of these panels here and here as well in the copper and then there's two underneath they're right tucked at the back there, there's like a ammunition magazine uh, just filled that in, you can hardly see it anyway and then coming around uh, there's just two little bits on the front of the this particular helmet and uh, I've just noticed uh, somewhere else, this round disc on the side of the head can be done in the copper as well, just being neat. A couple of bits on the head, there's another round disc on the side of the helmet, just going to do that in copper, and then there's a, a little block at the back there. And on the back of the helmet, uh, there is a panel that you can do in brass as well. You can just see the back of the helmet there. To be honest, uh, you can just choose wherever you want this copper to go or whatever the metallic colour is. I've decided to paint these. You can paint other areas. Just the vents on the missile, the back blast part here, another one of those just there. Uh, the inside of this part uh, all in copper and then the the rings and attachments for these bits on the back, and then around on the legs, just all the circular parts, the rod there that connects, then just uh, around on the feet, just the little a couple of little plates uh, that come down as well. So there's quite a lot of copper on the miniature, and then the uh, plasma rifles on the back here. Uh, these parts here, panels here, the front nozzles, um, again, screw shape, screw head shape 
thing there, that uh, box, and then the attachments for the thing coming out. So it's quite a lot of stuff. Uh, it's taken quite a while, uh, but that is the vast majority of the base colours done. Just one more colour to go, and that is the blue. So with the blue, uh, it's kind of this electrical effect that we're going for, right in the centre of the uh, helmet on this guy. Uh, that's going to, I'm going to paint that like a gem. So we're going to fill the whole thing in the blue. Let's give the whole thing a coat of the blue. And uh, also, right on the inside of the gun, there is another gem. Which, by the way, I've edged with copper. I've, I've filled the whole thing. See if you can see it just there. I filled the whole thing in copper to do the rim, and then I've neatly painted the blue uh, circle on top of that. And then also, I do in blue is any sensor nodes, the very tips. You'll see them on the back of the legs here. One and two, and then just paint them from the other side. It's the little nodes that come out right at the very tip of any uh, sensor equipment. You'll see it on the back here. This panel, there's a little node that sticks out, so I just coat the whole thing in the blue. That's those done. Then also in the blue, I do the piping that comes out uh, here. So just go neatly around where I've done the copper. I just fill in that piping right up to the very edge, so it's there, there, and there for that side. And again, this ultramarine's blue, nice solid colour, only one coat will be needed. There's also the same thing down here at the back. So I just, see with the copper I wasn't very neat, I just deliberately wanted to get the ends filled in and then knowing that the blue would then go on top of that. So doing your colours in the right order will help you save time as well. I didn't have to be too neat with the copper um, because I knew that I'd just be running over the top and neatening with the blue straight after. And there's one more part that I've seen. It's the actual parts of the, it's the front sort of charge part of this weapon again I've roughly gone around with the bronze and then I'm just going to neatly go around now with this blue you can fill in those holes if you want to those vents I'm not going to bother I'm just going to leave them as they are so that's one and then two now if you're trying to paint an army quick for a tournament or you just want to go to a certain standard uh, basic standard then this you could stop at this stage and you've got a nice colorful miniature a good strong color scheme and then you could you could theoretically leave it at that point and uh, that's ready enough for a game but we're going to move on now to the next stage we're going to completely let the miniature dry and then we're going to go on to stage two and get the washes done right the next stage is washes and you'll be happy to know that it's only one wash we're going to do, the same colour, and we're just going to coat the entire miniature. Uh, the only exception being the orange, uh, you're just going to try not to disturb that too much. So, if I show you on this panel here, I just run the brush through, nice uh, big brush here, it's a wash brush. And I make sure with the bristles that I'm filling in those cracks. And then look, you see, there's too much wash on there. I just keep it at a sensible level. So it's shading that dark grey, but not uh, forming too deep uh, a wash there. And then right in all the cracks, just this knee pad here coming around. And that's what we're doing. We're weathering it down. We're making that grey kind of a worn out grey. The, the strength of the grey is still there, and it's not disturbed too much, but there's this hint of this older kind of brown colour and it also fades everything nicely for you. It's, it's better than black. Solid black uh, can be a bit too strong and it black kills colour off but a subtle bit of brown 
dark brown here, this Agrax Earth shade. I'll do fine. I'm just on the abdomen here, working the brush into all the nooks and crannies. And then for the orange, you see I'm hardly disturbing it, and then just wiping the excess off. I might as well, I want to keep that orange uh, nice and strong, and uh, not disturb it too much. Coming around, I'm going to run the brush down onto the leg here, you can see. Shades the copper, shades the grey. Does it for you all in one go. And it's pretty quick progress that we're making. Just take your time to make sure that you're filling it all in well. And then just the hip and the leg here. Looking good. And I'll go on to an area, uh, just show you how the orange works again. So if, for example, I'm filling in the gun here, up to where the orange is. I'll go all the way around. Filling that all in, and then the white can be filled in, especially this crack I want to get, make sure that's completely filled in. And then with the orange, I'm just making sure that brown doesn't form too strong on the orange. I don't want that filled in, and then just fill in the end of the gun. So you just run the wash along the miniature. Now, some people have said, and it does happen sometimes, this uh, grey. Um, has like a, a bit of a problem with water tension. The a paint going on top, it will it won't cover properly. It will start to split apart and form puddles, and it won't go on very well. And the way to solve that with this spray is uh, after you've sprayed it. If you're worried about that happening, uh, just give the whole figure a coat of uh, varnish. Or I use Games Workshop Purity Seal. Give it a coat of that, a light coat, and then the ink will go on top of the Purity Seal, and it won't have a problem keying in. And you can do that at any stage. If you're painting a, uh, a lot of dark grey here and the, the paint's all, it's not spreading itself across uh, the miniature here. Give it a coat of purity seal when it's dry and then when you paint over the top you'll see that the, uh, the ink spreads out evenly and doesn't have that uh, reaction to the ink going on. So I found that helps and works fine. So I'm just going to run over the rest of the miniature here. Just applying this wash nice and quickly but thoroughly. Um, you don't want to miss any areas and you want to make sure you fill in all those cracks otherwise you'll have to come back to them again later. But just working fast and thoroughly over the figure there. And you see this copper dome? Just a nice amount of wash. Fill it in, take off the excess and then that's done. And that's come out really nice. Right, so just run the ink over the entire miniature, covering absolutely everything, and then just avoiding uh, the orange panelling as, panelling as best as possible. It doesn't matter if you cover it partly and it dries, it's no problem. Uh, but that's what the miniature look like, looks like. It's linked all the colours in together and has shaded everything for you. The grey has been shaded, uh, the dark grey, light grey, orange, uh, the copper or bronze colour, the blue, the whole lot. All shade all in one go, just one shade applied with a nice large brush, and that's a key part of the miniature does. Right, so we're on the uh, third and final stage of the miniature. Uh, there's quite a few bits to do, and the first stage to this is to bring back these base colours to full strength. So you've got the grey, the white, and the orange to redo. So just taking the administratum grey and then wherever the grey is we're going to go over it again nice and neat. I think you'll need two coats of this when you redo it. So you go over the miniature and this is the reason why I try not to do too many panels in the grey otherwise you're going to have a lot of work doing all those panels. But because you've only picked out a select amount there's not as much work involved but you can still get a really nice effect. So I'm just doing this shoulder pad here. First coat goes on. You want to be neat and you're helped a bit by the coat that you've already done so you know where you're painting and the edges and things are already picked out with the guidelines for it already picked out for you. So you're just redoing uh, the grey so the process is quite fast. Wherever there's a grey panel 
just redo it. Uh, the areas that have been shaded, you want to just go around those but not cover them up. So for example, see on the helmet here, just in between there and in between there where the shading's gone, I'll leave that. And that leaves that shading in place. All right, so I've gone over the grey there and uh, that's brought that colour and out, made it nice and strong but uh, I'm just going to go over it again wherever else on there, wherever on the figure you see that it's ghosty uh, it's mostly covered but another coat will do it nicely and that'll finish that off, that just makes that grey nice and solid and then just nice uh, brush strokes nice and clean and that will do fine. Even quicker this time, you're just running over your panels generally and then getting the brush strokes all in one direction to finish off. That's fine. Panel on the leg and just moving quite quickly around. You're just bringing that grey up to that kind of standard there. Almost totally solid. A little bit of ghosting, a little bit of this, not a problem really because you're going to put effects over the top but just to get rid of that general ghosting by doing two coats and that grey is done so I'm just going to do that over the rest of the grey and then we'll move on to the next base colour alright so that's your grey done in two coats just to lift that and really now you're going to repeat the same thing you've got to do two coats of the white on the panelling to bring that out as well so just this top part of the chest and you'll see now as these colours go on the miniature really begins to stand out because the shading's been done for you by that wash. So I'm just I just gently go around, try not to fill in where the shading's already been, and then run the brush around, just leaving the shading in place. Looks good, and then this the side here. Just a lot of straight angles and, and panels to paint with towel. But imagine if you're new to painting miniatures, Tau would be a good place to start because it's quite straightforward painting on them. Nice lot of sharp square lines. It would be quite easy to paint. Alright, so that panel's uh, pretty much dry since I started there. So all I do is just take the white one more time and run it. around the second time on top of the white and you'll see the colour comes out nice and strong that looks good, so the front part of the chest is done, there's two coats of white now what I'm going to do is any other white areas on the miniature I'm going to uh, cover those now right so we've uh, you've got the white panelling done, two, two coats so happy with that, there's a couple of bits now um, where you're going to need a steady hand and a bit of neat work First thing is the tower crest. There's two of them. There's one on the chest, and then there's one on the arm. Yeah, I'm going to do this one on the arm so you can see it clearly. I'm um, just taking a, a detail brush now, and again, two coats. You want to do a nice, neat work now. The shading's done for you, so you're just wanting to run the brush around. Made a mistake there. I've run that too close in that gap, so if I wet the brush and stick it in there and just dig out the white paint from around there, that restores it to how it should be. I'll show you the mistakes because we all make them and that's just a quick way of dealing with it. Instead of having to repaint the whole thing, if you move quickly before the paint dries, uh, you'll be able to get rid of the mistake and then go straight back to what you were doing. So I'm just running the paint around, making sure we, it's all even. Running around the edge, it looks pretty good. And I'm going to go to the other side. Just running the brush around. And nice and neatly. These crests, people will look at them, so you want to get them nice and neat. It's looking pretty good there. And then... Just running a crest around the top of the miniature there. The 
first coat of the white will be the neatest because you're going to reach all the, the far corners and the second coat you'll just be filling in any ghosty parts of the miniature so I'm just running around there, making sure that circle looks good just neatening up the top, it's quite fiddly at the top so I'm just making sure looks good, painting, looking at it looks nice and even we're pretty much dry now on this left hand side so I'm just going to run the brush in there, you see that, it makes it nice and solid and now the right hand side's pretty much dry so I'm going to fill all that in again with the white paint just to keep my brush strokes nice and neat and then finally the circle in the middle nice bit of white paint to fill that in and then the other part that needs to be neatly done I'll show you on one that's already been painted there's a bit of tower artwork a bit of uh, design work on the leg here I'm trying to paint too much because you can spend hours and hours and hours painting all this tower design stuff and it'll make the miniature take ages so I try and put it on a prominent spot just a simple design there um, and the style that I go for is I try and vary it so this design that I'm going to do now is not going to be the same I always try and uh, mix it up my design is going to stop there so it's never going to go higher than that white point there and the first one I'm going to do is going to be a thick bar running down I'm using the line that's already provided for you on the right. See, I'm keeping the line right up against the right hand side of the panels there. Run it all the way down, straight and neat as I can. And the tower design that I've seen done is it comes out like this and then thickens. So there's a thin part at the top, slopes down like a roof, and then straight all the way down. I'll just keep working the white until it's all straight and good looks pretty good run the brush right over the panel here just trying to get it all squared off right the next bar uh, if I show you all the types that you can do and you can just mix up the combination so I'm going to do a thin bar now so it's about that kind of thickness I'm going to run it all the way down the miniature so it looks quite prominent and it'll stand out so don't doing loads of little bits all over the miniature which will take you ages just do one big one and it does help create the tower style and then the other one that I do the other type is a dot then a bar if I do a thick bar and dots I'm going to put in a nice round circle I put the brush in the middle and keep moving it around till it creates the circle the size that I want looks pretty good and then I run a bar down uh, that is the thickness of that circle I'm going to cross over into this panel which is fine because it looks like the panel design has been painted on which is what you want it to look like and just to increase the thickness of that bar run it down to the very bottom of the miniature there's a tower design on there create that yourself and it's quite straightforward it's not too complicated it's just a dot and a thick bar or a thin bar or a thick bar but with a tapered top there and that's nice tower style now you can do multiple ones I just tend to put one on one leg and uh, that's about it, that's all I do. It's tempting to do more, but you end up spending a lot of time. It can be quite time consuming. So you'll see, for example, here on uh, this crisis suit, similar design, just on there. Uh, a, a thin bar and a dot, thick bar, and then a tapered one there, just as another combination of that design that you can do. And when you combine that with the different kind of panels and some transfers that we'll add later, 
then that's uh, plenty of towel markings on that figure without spending too much time. So for the orange you just go back to a standard brush, you take up your orange and then you just fill out uh, the panels. I tend to try and get it done in just one nice layer um, and just making sure the brush strokes are nice and even. There's a little bit of ghosting or a little bit of staining from where you've done the, the ink wash, it doesn't really matter because this orange is going to be made to look a bit dirty and grubby later on anyway and it will be masked by that so I'm just filling that out just filling that in with the orange paint and it's pretty good so you've repaired your, your primary colours nice and neat, you've picked out your detail uh, so the next stage after this is to move on to that bronze we take the Hashak Copper and what we're going to do is we're going to mix a lighter shade of it we're going to use uh, the Mithril Silver, the lightest silver that they do and we're going to mix that together to form a lighter bronze now the silver is quite strong I think one brush full a little bit more but less than a full brush full mix it up until it's significantly lighter bit of water because you want a nice coat now the silver is a strong pigment um, so this should go over in one coat so I just run around the brass disc like so just not going into the any of the cracks which has all been nicely shaded already by that wash there that's the kind of effect that you want you, you're shaded there uh, and then that highlight colour on top gives it a nice colour in fact I'm going to add a bit more of the silver just to match what I've already painted on the other figures a little bit of water as well just going to make that stand out the more silver you add the stronger the highlight will be so you can add or take away as much as you want but that's, that's come out nice and then neatly just pick out these bits just run the brush along the top of those and then run the brush down here that's all I need to do for that one so this is a bit quicker than the original coat right so I've just taken that bronze uh, that lighter shade and gone all around the bronze on the miniature and it really has lifted out uh, that bronze effect that's a nice shimmer and a, a glimmer uh, to that and it's sort of an alien feel that bronze effect is quite an alien sort of colour and it goes nicely with this dark grey so that's the bronze effect done you can sort of sense now the miniature is coming uh, to the end now we're getting close to finishing what I do next is get this blue out of the way uh, so we've got the blue here on the uh, plasma rifles and then on other parts on the figure as well alright so just a temporary loss of sound at this part of the video so I'm just doing a voice over here uh, you can see I'm just taking the ultramarines blue as it is and then uh, just going over the blue again just leaving the shaded areas and then just uh, running over the blue uh, on the uh, plasma rifles there I'll just do that over all of the blue um, just repairing it and uh, bringing it back into shape now and then uh, just running with the blue over the piping at the back of the weapons as well just repairing all of that making it a solid color again and then just being careful not to run the blue into the, the detail and uh, just leaving it shaded around where the, it joins onto the fixings of those pipes all right now i'm uh, going to show you how to paint this blue to build up that special effect that kind of electrical kind of feel just showing you on the uh, one of the xv88s already painted you can see that kind of a uh, fading effect that I do there and that's built up in a number of different layers and uh, we'll just take you through each stage of that so the first thing you do is just take some ultramarines blue and uh, get some water with it, a bit of white and you're just making a lighter shade of that blue you can see it there on the palette and then if you turn the brush sideways and you can run it along and it won't fill in the, those uh, gaps, those little vents there and you can run the brush sideways along and it will pick that detail out uh, so instead of having to paint around it carefully you can just run the brush across the top 
and it will go around. So I paint those three, and then I also paint uh, around the nozzle, highlighted, and then also along the back, trim there. So all that you'll have is the original Ultramarine's blue just in the middle, uh, that darker shade in the center there. And then I sort of round off the edges, make it nice and uh, neat. And then a little bit of water, a little bit of fading, just sort of fade that out as best you can, just to make it nice and smooth. And uh, that, that's the first stage there. Uh, well, here I'm just showing you uh, the results of one of the Crisis battle suits, just on the fusion gun there. Same technique that I'm using. Uh, you're just building up these layers of light blue. Right, so what we're going to do now is go on to the next shade. Uh, so just add in some more white to that light blue. And uh, you want to add some uh, water to it as well, just keep it flowing. And you get a nice lighter shade. Mix that up until you're happy with it. And then you're applying it, again using the brush sideways to pick out those vents. And then once you've done those three vents, also run it around the edges. Uh, just picking out the the, uh, the back highlight there and then also around the nozzle again but not rounding off or expanding that at all this time just a straight line and just down the other side and then underneath as well and that's the uh, second highlight right, once that's done uh, the third and final highlight is some more white making quite an extreme blue color all I highlight now is just those three vents in the extreme highlight and that just really picks them out it gives them that kind of sort of pulsating kind of look um, and that's all I do no no more of uh, highlighting than that just those three vents and that looks fine just repeat that over the uh, the miniature there and uh, that's those plasma guns looking or plasma rifles looking pretty effective uh, then for these nodes here on the tips I just take the highlighted blue, the lighter blue colour, and on the right hand side I run the highlight, wash the brush out, and then on the left hand side I put a dot. And uh, that's all the effect that I do. And, uh, there's not much to do on, on this particular miniature, but you can see on an XV8 here, Crisis Suit, uh, there's quite a lot to do. And you can see uh, that it's a highlight on the right, up the side of it, and then a dot on the left. And that just gives that sort of sparkling effect. And you can also see on there the fusion gun. Uh, the layers that I've done for that weapon, I've done the edges like I did with the fusion, uh, with the uh, plasma rifle, uh, but then also added just strength from the highlight down the centre then to give it sort of a pulsating kind of look. Um, so those are the tips of the weapons. You want them to stand out. You want to show off the fact that these uh, units are highly armed with uh, very dangerous weaponry. So we've done the, the we've done the nodes and the. Uh, plasma rifles there. The only other part in blue that we need to do are these pipes and uh, just to show you how to do those. So again you want a highlighted blue colour. So I'm taking some blue onto the palette and some white and just mixing that up. And really what I want to do is run a darker tone over the top Like this now see it here just run a lighter tone just to lighten the whole thing and then on the other side And then on top, just run down. So it's generally just a lighter blue. You're doing this blue because this is the kind of uh, the, the charging area for all these weapons. So if they're blue, then they're the charge. Uh, charging parts, the 
power pack parts will be in that blue as well and then once you've done that blue then you make a final highlight a lighter blue and I'm just going to highlight really uh, the where the pipe joins where the pipe joins this um, copper and so the finger just going to reduce the strength of that sort of a, a cheating way to do blending blending can take ages but if you're able to just use your finger I'm just running it in and then just blending it out it's a bit crude but it works I'm just running the light, basically running the light blue out from where it touches the copper where it joins up and then just blending it out, fading it in. And that just makes that come alive with sort of electrical kind of effect. So that's the blue done. That's a fiddly part, a bit time consuming, but that's nicely lifted away from the miniature now. Complements the orange and the white and the gray very nicely. So you've got a number of colors going on there. Nice interaction of colors. That's the blue done. Uh, so we're gonna go on to special effects for the miniature now. Right, the next stage is what I've called special effects. Uh, so you can leave the figure like that if you want, sort of factory fresh kind of look, slightly weathered. Uh, but to transform it from that to that, that sort of weathered, chipped look. And also that weathering that you see on the panelling. I'm going to show you how to do it now. Uh, quite straightforward. So come back to our original and the brush you're going to use, just use a detail brush this time around. And the first colour that I use is the Seraphim Serpia. And what I do with that, uh, if I show you, uh, we'll just do one area, we'll just do this panel here uh, on the top of the chest. So the first thing I do is just refill in the cracks a little bit with this Seraphim Serpia. Immediately that's added sort of some rust in there. And then use a bit of water because I don't want to go too strong. I just want to create a slight stains, blotches on the figure. Just in patches and in areas. And that will about do. Any extra I can take off with a finger. Not too strong that you destroy the colour. Just a subtle amount. If you look at the figure now, uh, you've started to knock that colour down. And until that dries, I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. Uh, it may not be that significant, you may not see too much of it. But again on the orange, and then on this crest here, you see I'm just adding some of the colour. And then just rem removing some of it. It just knocks the white down and creates that dirty look, a bit of rust creeping in, a bit of uh, sort of earthy colours got in there so these towers have been weathered many a storm and just this, you don't have to do the dark grey, it's just the grey uh, the light grey, uh, the white and the orange areas and then just the white here, a bit of the grey just in patches, even the crest. I don't want to do too much because I don't want to destroy the white, but enough so that it keys it all in. And you can just stab a bit with a brush just to create a bit of worn effect on there, and just coming around. Just takes the purity away a little bit, and adds a bit of uh, weathering to the miniature. Again on the gun here, a little bit too much, just going to take my finger, take the worst of that away and just leave a few uh, deliberate blotches around. And then see you've already painted uh, the design on the leg, well, that can be partly blotched as well. Just creating, it keys the whole thing in. The same, the same shading is going on the light grey 
and the white and it just sort of merges everything makes it all one because these colors are quite stark and independent from each other when you start weathering it sort of links the whole model in together this is sort of just a general uh, sort of dirtying effect that you're doing quite straightforward and you add as much or as little as you want so you can see now just subtly uh, that's just sort of blended the colours together a bit and added a bit of wear and tear next part is to take Agrax Earth Shade and with a neat tip absorbing some of the ink you want to create uh, these brush strokes as I apply them you'll start to see them Now you just add a bit more. So you come to an edge and you apply these downward brush strokes. Like where water's uh, run down and it's rusted a bit and it's um, that rust has flowed down and stained the white. You sort of see that coming through and as that dries I'm going to apply another layer just to strengthen that. Then on a a panelled area you can apply just sort of some spots some sort of stain marks and that looks good and on top here some of the stain marks coming down again so you're just taking that uh, Agrax Earth shade and you just either creating those downward uh, sort of stain marks, run marks where the water's run down and rusted uh, the figure there or uh, just sort of making blotches patches of uh, sort of dirt and grime general grime on the figure so on the shoulder for example I'm going to blotch out a bit of the orange there, run a few blotches, shoulder, a few downward strokes as well. See, just run them down. Like that, that looks fine. So I'm going to do that. I'll just show you a bit on the shoulder pad as well. So, um, first thing I want to do is some stains running down. That looks quite effective. You can see them running down there. And then also uh, some general patches. Now, I think I've done too much there, so I just uh, lose some stuff off the brush. And I'll do fine. Again here. And then just run in the brush. Also, you'll see, and uh, just on here, some I've stabbed the brush here and I left it quite strong looking. Some actual, real uh, strong marks there as well. Just where they uh, often, you can see those dots there. It looks quite effective as well. Just sort of some splatters, like some mud splatters or whatever, um, on the figure also help. You're just creating an effect, really, and. That's pretty much done. I'm going to add just a couple of marks under the guns there. It's quite a quick technique. You can see it right along there. So it's still a grey panel, but it's been it's a significant wear and tear to it. Now you can keep adding as much or as little as you want, depending on how weathered you want them to look. I want mine to look pretty seasoned, so I've gone over quite a lot there. Uh, but without interrupting the colour too much, it's still a white panelling, I've not destroyed it, made it light brown or whatever. So that's that done. Let that dry, and uh, you can leave it at that stage if you don't want to do chipping. I like to add the chipping because I want to make a plastic miniature look metallic. I want this to look like a metallic machine, and that chipping helps. And it's uh, quite an easy technique, quite a very easy technique to apply, and it will add a nice effect to the figure there. I've just seen. Uh, with the blue there that I haven't painted the 
the gem or the vision uh, socket there which should be in blue so I take the ultra runes blue add a bit of white and a little bit of water just to make it flow with a nice tip on the brush just paint the bottom right hand side in sort of a crescent shape going around then add some more white to that highlight colour and just touch that extreme highlight in the bottom right corner and that just lifts that out nice stage and the final part is with a really nice tip I take a dip in the white and in the very top left hand corner receives a dot of white and that's the gem done very effective very fast so if you can learn how to do those then you can paint those gems and that draws the eye in and you've got a nice area of interest there and you'll see artists do you'll see artists do that when you paint a face you put your detail and emphasis around here and you don't have to put as much emphasis uh, on the rest and you'll you'll see that uh, I was looking at some artwork in uh, one of the codexes the other day and you see what the artist does he does a general painting with not much detail and on the area that he wants you to focus on that's where he'll do the extra detail and the extra drawing and you'll see it and I was looking at pictures of uh, Space Marines and the new codex um, and some of the illustrations that were done very very minimal detail around the edges around the legs uh, around the arms and the background but on the facial area and shoulders was where the emphasis was placed and it's the same what you're trying to do with this miniature here uh, the eye is naturally going to be drawn to the head and to the eyes so you, that's key to get that right and to get it all neat around this area here and then that will create an impression for the entire figure right so the next stage is the chipping you can't use any old silver I've found uh, the, the darker silvers tend to be too dark and they don't stand out enough the mithril silver, the lightest silver uh, that they do um, is too light so I've found, and uh, it's too light so that when you put a chip in mithril silver on the white you can't hardly see it so I've found that the best colour to use that's just dark enough so that it can be applied to white for chipping but also dark enough for the other colours and then light enough for the darker colours well that sort of balance in between is the iron breaker paint uh, so which is the old chain mount so you take a neat brush again, detail brush a nice consistency to the paint, it's got a nice flow to it and then just loaded my brush up there, not too much paint and you're just applying chips wherever you think uh, the metal would be chipped would, would bash which is usually the edges and the corners then you just apply your chipping and it's chipped so it's not a straight line it's just sort of a dappled effect so I'm putting quite a bit of chipping on the edge of this chest here I think a little bit would be on there on this rim there that looks really good and then just a bit on this corner and coming around and then I'm going to put a scrape and usually I do that by applying one, two dashes like that and that's where this, the paint has actually been scraped it's bashed into something right now you're going to see how it looks uh, let's just put a few more dots on there so now we're going to apply it to let's say this arm here so that you can see it you can see how it applies to the dark grey so just on corners and panels like that and then not edging all of the panels but only partly then you can do a dots chips like that, stone uh, where stones are flicked up perhaps and chip the paint the trick is not to do the whole thing but just selected areas and that looks fine we'll go onto the shoulder pad to show you so I'm just running the brush up corner these corners will definitely be chipped coming along and then there's a line that runs along here so I'm going to chip that like that 
Moving along the top here with the orange coming down. That's looking, it's looking pretty good. And just some random shipping as well. And I'm quite pleased with the outcome of that. So you can see the chipping effect now on the shoulder pad. You can see how it's done on uh, the dark grey. And then also on the white. It's a nice colouring. For all of those colours, and again, I'm just going to show you a bit on the body here, just a little bit. Wouldn't get much scraping around here. And then look, just a couple of random bits of chipping, and it just creates that chipped effect. Looks nice. I'm just going to run that over the entire miniature, as much or as little as you want. Try not to do too much. Temptation is to chip all the lines, and it's you've overkill. It's too much. It's just a little bit here and there. And if you can do less than that, if you want just tiny bits here and there, would be enough to create that chipped effect. Right, so you can see that I've gone around the figure there with the chipping, and combining that with the uh, washes has given a nice weathered look. And uh, you can see that's quite a, uh, a veteran of many a towel campaign. Figure looks quite nice. Uh, just one stage really, and that's transfers and uh, just show you a couple of tricks of those not many to apply to this one you apply as many or as little as you want you can apply too much um, and it just overcrowds the figure so just a couple that we're going to apply so I've cut them out um, I cut my transfers out like this I just cut them as close to the design as I can so there's less uh, spare transfer Hanging over and just dip them in water and then just leave them at the side of my mixing palette and they'll just sit there until they loosen up. And then what I do, a little trick with transfers, if you apply a transfer directly on, uh, sometimes you'll get kind of a ghosty effect. That's what I mean by that, is that you apply the transfer and then you'll see the actual transfer itself. Um, the outline of it. So what I do to stop that and to help the transfer stick is take a bit of PVA glue, the same glue I use for the basing, just put that on the palette as well. And I'll mix that with the water and then that will help the transfer stick and it will stop that ghosting. You'll see that the transfer blends in perfectly with the background colour and you won't see where the transfer has gone on. So the first transfer uh, is just on top of the shoulder here. So what I've done is I've applied a bit of water to the to the area, and then some PVA glue mixed in with the water as well, and then so that's now like watery PVA, and then I take my transfer, it just slips off the paper, pick it up with my brush, and then lay that on. And then you can use what you want, a pin or whatever. I'm just using the tip of a knife and very, very gently just going to maneuver that design into position until I'm happy with it. And then just using the brush, I'm just going to squeeze any spare water out of the design. Put the excess water onto my tissue. And just using the brush to push any of the water that's under the design out. And now the design starts to stick. It's not moving. And that's fine. That will just sit there and that will dry on there. One other transfer that I put on. And that's on the side of the missile here. So watery PVA again. Notice I'm not putting floods on just enough, you've got to work quite quick, you've got to apply this before it dries just using the brush to pick up my transfer and then just applying the transfer on, laying it on taking the excess water away from the brush using my knife just to position the transfer 
If you're gentle with a knife, you won't split the transfer or damage it. And it's a good grip on the transfer to manoeuvre it into the position that you want. And with the brush, being careful, I'm, it's just the bristles I'm using. I'm just pushing out the spare water to sit nice and plush against that paint, against that plastic. Now that spare water's all come out, and that transfers solidly in position. So that's done. That transfers in position now, it's fine. And that glue, I see now that's drying, and you can see there that you can't tell that there's a transfer all the way around. The glue has made it a nice clean fit onto the miniature. One other thing, when that's dry, this is about dry, it dries quite quick. And take a little bit of seraphim serpia and I just dab that on just to dirty the design a little bit to blend it in with the rest of the effect of the miniature. Not too much, just a little bit, and that tones the transfer in. So that miniature is finished. Really, the last part is just a bit of PVA glue. Take my basin tub of flock. Now, people have been asking what flock is it? Uh, I'll just tell you that in a second. So, we take the PVA glue with the old brush and we just dab it on randomly onto the base. So, yeah, there's a fair amount gone in. And this introduces a new colour, another colour, green. And I think that brings life to the base and it complements the colour of the miniature as well. So that's all dabbed on. And a nice flat tub, I can get the whole miniature in. I can just tip the flock over the top. That looks fine. And then just uh, tap off the excess. Try and save as much of your flock as you can. Once that's all off, just take it to the side and blow off the spare. Once the spare is blown off, just use your finger to rub uh, the spare flock off the rim of the base. And there he is. So that's the finished miniature with the basing now done. He's ready for varnishing, so I use Games, Work Games Workshop Purity Seal. It's the best that I've found. It's not complete flat matte. So it keeps your metallics looking shiny, um, but it doesn't dry so that it's too shiny to make your mats look too shiny. It's just that satin kind of finish. It's sort of a perfect blend, really. It's the best spray that I know. Uh, I've used many different varnishes over the years, but the, the Purity Seal at the moment that Games Workshop produce is excellent. So I'll give that a spray over the whole figure, and that'll seal it, and it'll seal in the transfers and protect them as well. But that is your XV88. For the grass that I use, it's... Um, called Verdant Green and it's by a company called uh, TSS, Total System Scenic, they're based in the UK and they're the ones that pr produce this Verdant Green, it's a very fine grain, um, static grass but it's a nice colour, really like the colour, use it on all my miniatures um, but you can use the Games Workshop different shades that they do, the, the uh, blades are a bit longer, um, you can also uh, you can do whatever you want, but that's the, that's what I use, and they sell it in packs for about two or three pounds, um, and that pack will go a long way if you're not covering particularly much. I mean, a pack would last. You could be able to use that for an entire army. But it's Total System Scenic, they're called. And they have a website, and you can order online. Uh, just Google them, and you'll see them come up. So that's it. It can be applied to the whole tower force. There's the figure that I've finished. Uh, so there he is. And then we can now bring him together with his uh, team leader. And then the... Uh, second guy as well. Quite a mean looking squad uh, and I'm going to paint some shield drones as well to protect them and uh, hopefully they'll dominate many a battlefield but you can see the similar design for those two and then the leader is a different configuration of the same colour scheme and then as I said earlier you can apply it to other tower units my uh, XV8 teams are painted in the same style. The infantry when you see them uh, are painted in the same technique as well and then the uh, without giving too much away about my army here the hammerheads have come out quite nice as well 
and so we'll just put this one together so you can see again just as I mentioned earlier uh, I'm going to put the base on here, I've magnetised the base this time so that one just goes on like that so you can see that the central part of the vehicle uh, receives the most interest and I've just put a colour either side just to balance it out and then we'll just apply these smart missile systems as well and then there's the main gun on top and then again like the uh, rail rifles here the heavy rail rifle and uh, that's similar to theirs so you've got that repeating theme throughout so the opponent's going to look out across the table and he's going to see one main gun here he's going to see a unit carrying three there and I've got another hammerhead in the force as well intimidation big guns and uh, I think that will psychologically help in the game so uh, that's I think is a nice colour scheme for the tower and you can see how it's been applied to different units look out for my completed tower force in the future in games and also there'll be a tower army tactica and army overview video where the whole tower force can be seen we'll discuss tactics and the philosophy behind it as well but that's the painting tutorial uh, thanks for watching check out the other painting tutorials that I have got Dark Elder at the moment Blood Angels and uh, Macrons as well check out those check out the battle reports and uh, I think I may do a showcase video for my armies as well just all in one a big showcase video so you can see all the units and you can use that video as a painting reference I'll put them on the turntable so you can see them 360 degrees and uh, you will be able to uh, use that as painting reference as you paint the figures but uh, thanks for watching this painting tutorial and uh, tune in next time